Olympics. Now, former political specialist at the US Embassy, that's a mouthful, Michael Martins joins us <laughs> in the studio. Michael, good morning. Uh, thank you for coming in. To the US, um, I mean, he here's my... Before we talk about that ridiculous <laughs> dinner at Mar-a-Lago, we're talking about this $60 billion package of aid to Ukraine. I've been quite vocal. Nick might have a different view. I believe, however hard it is for all of these countries in the middle of the cost of living crisis, that actually we need to support Ukraine because if Putin is successful and puts one step outside, it's a NATO war and it's our war. But I understand that people are going, hold on, we're skint. But for me, that's the only way forward. I'm quite surprised that, that, that Biden isn't using this as an opportunity to be quite powerful. But what do American people want? So I think when it comes to the aid, like the aid package, um, the key holdup is actually Speaker Johnson in the House of Representatives, and his district voted uh, almost by a two to one margin uh, in favor of President Trump. And the Trump isolationist wing of the Republican Party doesn't want this aid package to go through. And uh, when Foreign Secretary Cameron was in D.C. and talking with uh, Secretary Blinken, uh, they almost they came out almost immediately and said, if you table this vote. You know, we will call a confidence vote in you as a speaker. So, in many ways, it's actually more about the Speaker of the House rather than the American people's preference. What do they think? Do they support? Earlier, somebody said, "Oh, Trump's just talking to his base." Mm -hmm. But there is an argument that says that NATO countries, European countries, could do more financially, and America has always spent more. So, is is Trump appealing to a wide base in America, or what? what what's the reaction to his view? He's he's appealing definitely to Republican voters that are much more skeptical of involving themselves in foreign wars and paying for them. Um, and in an election year, uh, especially when many congressional uh, people have to run for re-election, uh, one of the first steps to that is getting over a primary. And they have to appeal to that base. So uh, it's a lot of it is electioneering uh, in an election year, too. Do you think that Donald Trump would see that through if he was to become president and he would cease all aid going to Ukraine? It was one of the first, uh, one of the only things that he said after his meeting with uh, Foreign Secretary Cameron is that uh, there's, there's going to be a focus on doing a deal, ending the conflict in, in Ukraine. Uh, what but he's that that would he, like. that... he thinks he can pick up the phone to Putin and finish it, doesn't he? Well, he's got, you know, he's not unfamiliar with President Putin. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there are some people arguing that if anyone was to do it, he would be the man. But of course, that would be massively to the detriment of Ukraine because yeah, presumably probably. it would involve giving up some of the land. Mm, yeah. I mean, I completely agree. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, he paints himself to be a picture, but Nick's right. The only way that he could do this would be to give something away from Ukraine. Yeah, it, uh, I don't think he's given much detail. No. <laughs> uh, uh, Donald as, Trump? I know, well, he's, he, he takes the stance of it's often always a negotiation, but, right? But, so. but, but before we talk about Israel, because yeah. I, I, I'm not his biggest fan, Cameron, but I, I, I did this in the last hour. Whatever we say about Donald Trump, whatever we say about this small core of Republican voters, this man has some amazing pulling ability. Our foreign secretary, who was a not successful prime minister who stalked out of 10 Downing Street when he lost a referendum. Quote, this is how he described Donald Trump a year ago, divisive, stupid and misogynistic, right? Trots on down to Mar-a-Lago, has lunch or dinner with Donald Trump and loves every minute of it. Donald Trump must be laughing all over his face, wouldn't he, Mike? Come on. <laughs> I, think, I think President Trump is, is wholly focused on winning the election. Do you and think I he will? Personally, I, I do. I think he's leading in the polls. I think he's leading in swing states, often sometimes by a double-digit margin. Uh, I think the bigger one of the bigger issues, he's often leading in... There are seven competitive Senate seats, uh, and he's leading in some of those by up to 10 points. Uh, and if you control the Senate and the presidency, you can do a lot uh, in power. What do you make for calls to and arms licenses and arms deals between uh, Israel and the US. Obviously, there were strong calls for that to happen with the UK and Israel last week. David Cameron said that that won't happen, despite the fact that he's received legal advice that many think might contravene that uh, human rights law. Um, what do you make of the US's current relationship with Israel? On one hand, selling arms, whilst also airdropping in much needed aid into Gaza. Where does that sit with, with voters? So, uh, I think Secretary Blinken, uh, when he was talking about this at the press conference, you know, he, he outlines the delicate balance that American foreign policy has to play in that conflict, where it's uh, traditionally been a strong ally of Israel and at the same time a supporter of a two-state solution. Yeah. And, you know, there is obviously the, 
the humanitarian issue in Gaza is, you know, it's it's very uh, it's very apparent. So the U.S. at the same time is pushing. Uh, they've done the airdrop. Uh, I think it was uh, today. But I, I, I take yeah. Nicola's point, and I think that this is really where I don't want to make it about Sunak. I'll make it about Biden. Mm -hmm. You, you, but actually, we can make it about Sunak, at least with Donald Trump. And I don't agree with uh, as, as much as I disagree with what Donald Trump says, but at least you know his opinion. You can't sell arms to a person and then say you're, you're, you're causing a humanitarian crisis because the, the, the public will go, hold on a minute, you're having your cake and eating it. The United States of America was always Israel's number one supporter, and I don't think anybody in the world would disagree that they had a right. Uh, after what happened on October the 7th. But you look at that humanitarian crisis, the mistakes that have been made, I've been off, those seven aid workers who died, and things have to change. But I'm still not really of the opinion that, that, that Biden is as strong as he could be, and that would help him, would it not, in election year? Uh, I, well, I think the election kind of complicates his position because the right. Democratic Party is is split in some right. ways on the Israel-Palestine conflict. So it it does make it a bit difficult for him to take as strident a position as as others uh, that are not facing that same sort of you know election issue. We think we've got problems here. It's fascinating <laughs> watching America. Michael Masters, thank you so much indeed.